All right, welcome back to the Root BSD Technology Channel. Today, I'm going to talk about the subject of web browsers in OpenBSD. Now, uh, complimentary NeoFetch running OpenBSD Current 7.0, and I am still using a gener oh, I'm using generic kernel uh, 206. Okay, so yeah, so uh, you know, a lot of people these days are always ta uh, talking about web browsers. Uh, there's a lot of web browsers out there, a lot of options. Um, I know sometimes for some people this can almost be a, like a like a touchy subject because some people treat web browsers kind of like like they're it's their sports teams or something and get kind of weird about it, you know. And personally, I mean, there's gonna be pros and cons to using any web browser. Not there's no such thing as the perfect web browser. They all have issues and and uh, especially um, your main big web browsers, which are gonna be either Firefox based or Chromium based. Um, with and I see Firefox uses the Gecko engine and uh, Chromium uses the Blink engine. Uh, those kind of uh, browsers are there, you know, in terms of security, there's, there's always going to be security issues with those things. Those things are always going to be kind of a bit of a, um, I'd say an attack vector, uh, uh you know, a, a security and vulnerability in any system, unfortunately, you know, and, and that's kind of, it kind of sucks because, uh, you know, we all love to use web browsers. We love to surf the modern web, you know, for the most part. I mean, I'm sure there's some, some of you guys you might do a lot of Gemini and Gopher and stuff like that. and That's cool. I like that stuff too. Um, so I can't cover every single web browser in OpenBSD. That would just be too time consuming. So I'm just going to go over some ones that I'm familiar with and uh, just kind of give you my opinion on and, sh and sh also just show you um, some of the issues with some of them and, and some of the trade-offs. Um, so obviously, you know, if anybody's watched my channel for a long time, you know that I, I, I use uh, Chromium in uh, OpenBSD. Uh, it is the uh, the most performant web browser. Um, it, it, it has full hardware acceleration. It's very smooth. Uh, um, I've, uh, it's very stable. Uh, I can't say I've really ever had a crash on me, uh, except for maybe something that had to do with rat poison and, and running with uh, two monitors. But yeah, uh, I really I really like using Chromium. Uh, this is not to be confused with Chrome. This is Chromium, which is uh, open source. And um, I know uh, some people say, well, Chromium, there's some privacy issues that, you know, it's, it dials home to Google or there's some telemetry and stuff like that. I understand. And I have uh, in my settings, let's see here. I have their uh, their telemetry turned off. Let's see here. If I can remember. Also, just recently, there were some uh, really nasty CVEs found in Chromium. So I would definitely recommend uh, upgrading your version of Chromium. Make sure you're running at least uh, this uh, 96.04664110 build or, or higher. Um, I'm trying to remember, where was that? Uh... Aha. So this privacy sandbox thing, the, the FLOC, I have that turned off. Okay. Um, so also... Uh, uh, Chrome is using uh, OpenBSD Security Technologies Pledge and Unveil. Now, uh, Pledge is uh, kernel level kernel level sandboxing that is compiled into the source code. Um, you can see right here. Uh, it says right here uh, blah, 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 uses Pledge, and um, also what it does is it restricts what kind of system calls. Uh, are allowed to be used by uh, the web browser. And it's also using something called Unveil. And Unveil is a system call that basically restricts the file system view. It only allows, uh, Chrome can only see and interact with the downloads folder. It can't see or interact with any other folder in the file system. So these are really important because no matter what you do, and, and you can you know have an up-to-date version, there's always possibly gonna be zero days there's always going to be possibly some things they haven't found yet. I remember when in, in um they uh in Firefox that iron monkey just in time thing that was pretty nasty. And who knows how long that was you know hiding around. So and also yeah, and Firefox is also using Pledge and Unveil. And uh, the main reason why I don't use Firefox on a regular basis in uh in OpenBSD is that our Firefox port currently does not have hardware acceleration. And I'll show you it's um right here. If I go to YouTube, there's just a lot of screen tearing. Basically, it's it's using the CPU to render. 
Um, I don't know exactly know why it's doing that. Or maybe they might have fixed it. Let's see. Let me run uh, some 4K video. I should file a claim. Oh, they fixed it. Did they? Yeah, that's it. Heroes aren't born. Heroes are just those who step up when really it's needed pause this. most. Train to be a healthcare hero. Oh, nice. Okay, so I'm pleasantly surprised. The uh, the latest build of Firefox has hardware acceleration working. So definitely I might try to use Firefox more. No screen tear. Oh, no. Let's see. You know, that's not that bad. I'm not really, I'm not seeing screen tearing at all. Very nice, very nice. So yeah, that was an issue, uh, uh, just, uh, just, you know, uh, I'd say uh, an update ago. <laughs> so this is good news. Yeah, definitely is running a lot better. Uh, I was just testing Firefox extended service release and it did not have uh, this nice, it, it still had some screen tearing. Yeah, you can still see a little bit of screen tearing, but this is, this is not bad. This feels a lot better. Um, Feels, run, feels like it runs a lot smoother. Yeah, let's just see how text looks. Uh, so yeah. So there you go. Uh, we have Firefox. Yeah, and Firefox is using Pledge and Unveil. Um, and those are great security technologies that help protect you. Uh, running OpenBSD along with OpenB other OpenBSD things. Um, and uh, yeah, so... Uh, Firefox is great for privacy. I know some people really like to use Firefox because they don't like the idea that they're helping Chrome to set the web uh, the standards for the web. And I understand that. Um, you know, and I and I do I use when I'm in Linux, I generally use uh, Firefox. Um, there was one night though where I was trying to upload a a 4K video and it crashed on me, so I got a little bitter about that. I installed Brave. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so we got Firefox. We got uh, now it looks like in OpenBSD current. I can't tell you what it's like in, in, in stable and release, but in OpenBSD current, that's our development branch. It's kind of like our role, our bleeding edge branch. And honestly, uh, it's, it's not, it's, I, I've never really experienced any, any instability in current. So I, I would, I could safely recommend that if you're going to use desktop OpenBSD, I would recommend running current. Uh, uh, you, uh, there's reasons why people would want to run a uh, release or, or, uh, stable, the problem with it is, is sometimes uh, like web browsers just don't get updated for, till the next release, or uh, you know sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. It just depends. And uh, they do they do have a stable backports channel for for packages. Uh, I haven't checked it in a while, so I don't know how how, how that's doing. But uh, I would just recommend running current if you're going to be uh, running a uh, desktop OpenBSD. If you know, um, I think release uh, sometimes makes more sense for the server, personally. But uh, that's just my personal opinion. Uh, yeah, so we have Firefox. Uh, there's Firefox Extended Service Release. That one, the screen tearing. I was just—I don't want to pull it up. I was just testing it. The screen tearing uh, wasn't. Uh, it was. It was there. It was visible. But um, in Chrome, like you can, we can test out here in Chrome. The uh, it, it looks pretty. It's pretty good. Like you can see. Uh, and I'm screencasting with FMMPEG right now. Uh, let's, this is a uh, downtown Tokyo, the red light district. I just wanted something with a lot of motion, like people walking around, people moving. This is I'm do. Uh, let's see here. I'm doing a uh, 440p. I don't know if uh, do, during screencasting how well this looks. Maybe I'll just take it down to 1080p. You can see. Uh, it's pretty performant. I think this is going a little slower to my eyes because of uh, the screencasting. Not sure. We could try uh, that same video, 4K Costa Rica. Try it. See how this looks. And you can see how uh, scrolling goes. But yeah, so uh, those are the main 
Fire, uh, Firefox and Chromium are the main web browsers in uh, in OpenBSD. Um, now we also have uh, we have the Tor browser. Now let me see here uh, how well the Tor browser is doing. I'm gonna totally max out my memory right now. <laughs> I got 12 gigabytes though, so I should be good, right? We'll see. Open up like eight web browsers. <laughs> All right, so uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna. I I some I sometimes have issues accessing YouTube's. Yeah, see when you try to access YouTube on the Tor browser, it, it usually complains. What I'll do is I'll access um, an Nvidia's instance. I'll just use a YouTube or it's YouTube.bay. There we go. All right, so yeah, and then it uh, looks like a. Uh, uh, the um, hardware acceleration is working a little better uh, with uh, in uh, Tor browser. Let's uh, try that 4K video. So it doesn't work. What you have to do is you have to embed from YouTube. All right, so YouTube does, just doesn't want to uh, let me watch videos. <laughs> uh, embed link. No. Well, anyways, we have the Tor browser. Uh, you know, probably not working very well for uh, watching video. None of these want to work right now. So yeah, um, and it does complain about to play video. You may need to install the required. I have like all the re the, the required software to run video for Firefox based browsers on here, so I don't know what the deal is. But yeah, we have the Tor browser. Uh, so I know you're, I'm probably gonna get questions in the in the comment section. Uh, well, do you have X X Y Z browser? And uh, please please don't do that. Just uh, you know, I if you want to ask figure out if you want to know what web browsers we have available. Just uh, go to openports.say, or I'm sorry, se. Uh, go to openports.pl. Those are the two uh, like uh, ports websites that we have to look at uh, and browse our ports. You can also just look on the CVS source tree or the GitHub source tree. Uh, you just look in the ports section, um, and all all the ports are not. It's not about um, what programs you can compile. All the the programs that are in ports are generally there's a binary available in in in, uh, in with package add with a few exceptions but um yeah you just go look at the uh www dot www and ports and it'll show you uh all all the available web browsers so one of the main ones that we don't have that i know people really love are we don't have LibreFox, we don't have ungoogle chromium and we don't have brave okay so i know for some people that might be like an ah moment oh shucks you know that sucks but uh, yeah, you know, we we have what we have. It's you know, it's a volunteer open source project, and you know, the people that bring these browsers to us are volunteers, and it's what they want to use, and it's their project. You know, can't have it all. Um, I do uh, I do want to add though, we do have Electron uh, in OpenBSC. Uh, so and we ha uh, we have Cute Browser. Right here, there we go. And Q Browser is version 2.3.1. Uh, um, now, the only thing that is kind of bad about using Q Browser right now is our. Um, let's see right here. Our. I need to get in the cute browser using mode here. So our version of Qt Web Engine, kind of, it, it hasn't been. Uh, it's still kind of old. It's a uh, Qt Web Engine 5.15.2. Um, I mean, it's being maintained for builds for build purposes. Like the last uh, CVS commit was a uh, uh, 2021.99. Um, but yeah, if you see right here. It's running a version, let's see, uh, where's that Chrome version at? That's late. Sorry if I'm kind of dumb. Oh, yeah, right here. Uh, 
it's running version 83, uh, 83. So, so it's running an old version of, of Chromium. So, um, eh, and you know, and it's not pledged and it's not using unveil. So we have cute browser. It's definitely lighter weight on the memory and it has that nice, uh, keyboard, uh, interface, but I, I, I would cast a little bit of doubt on how, uh, secure it is because there's been some serious, uh, CVEs found in, um, in Chromium recently, just in the past couple weeks. So, uh, I would. I don't know if I could advise using a uh, Qt browser until they get a more up-to-date Qt web engine. I could be wrong, but um, I mean, unless you're not concerned about that kind of stuff. Uh, but we do have it. Uh, it's 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 definitely usable. Um, you can definitely you know watch YouTube videos and stuff on it. Uh, so if you're a Qt browser fan, uh, it's there. Uh, just not the most. Uh, not the. It's kind of an older version of Qt web engine that hasn't been updated since uh, January. Uh, 20th. I mean, they've they've been working on like just build stuff on it, but the actual version is pretty old. Um, so there's that. Uh, let's see. Don't want to open up too many of these at the same time. Um, yeah. So uh, let's see here. Continue. So yeah, and also um, if if uh, if privacy isn't is a concern for you, if you want to use uh, uh, Chromium because it's it's got better performance, if privacy is an issue. Uh, we also do have uh, Iridium. Iridium is basically like kind of a privacy hardened Chromium build. And uh, let me see here if it's using a uh, uh, save page as. And it is using a pledge and unveil. So you see how I can't see, see how I can't like look on anything else on the computer except for the downloads folder. So yeah, pretty cool stuff. Um, and, and it does have full hardware acceleration. You can see right here, it's running pretty smoothly. So yeah, so Iridium might be an option for you if you if you're uh, you're more concerned about privacy and you're anti Google. Um, and you might say, "Root busy, aren't you concerned about privacy? Aren't you anti Google?" Yeah, to a degree. But uh, I also am really concerned about security too and performance. So I mean, I mean, I use I I, I don't I don't know. I'm not, I'm just I don't know. I'm not that I'm not that weird. I, I guess I'm not saying it's weird. But uh, I'm just I'm not as um, uh, like radical about the whole the whole thing. Like I understand the concerns. I just uh, I don't know. I just I don't know. It doesn't it doesn't bother me as much. I guess I don't know. Like I know Google Google is a terrible uh, corporation, and I know they do unethical things, and they are bad on the environment, and they are uh, they are anti free speech. And they do have some very uh, liberal uh, kind of uh, people in their in their ranks that uh, just kind of do kind of like you know shady things. So you know I, I know that's the thing, but also you know Google does donate a lot of money to open source. Um, and I don't know. I mean, I guess that's about the best the best thing I could say about them. Probably because they use a lot of those open source products so to save themselves some money, you know, to, to line their pockets. So I don't know. I mean it. I'm just giving you the options. Like I said, I know the browser thing is like kind of a hot, you know, it's a hot button issue. People get kind of up in their feelings about browsers. Um, you know, some people just think it's like a complete sin to use anything Chromium or Chromium based at all. Um, I don't know. I mean, you know, Mozilla, Mozilla, the company Mozilla is not, they're, they're, they're weird too, man. They do shady things and they, they're, they, they, I don't know. I've, I'm always hearing stories about Mozilla and like negative things about about them so i don't know man like i just i don't I'm, I'm apolitical about this whole browser thing i just i'm interested in the code and what works well and also i i don't i don't want to be hacked and uh i just you know if you're going to use a web browser i want to use like the best option um so i would say uh i me personally i've i've kind of just settled in on on using the the main chromium build i might actually try you know you know switching over to iridium in the future i'm not sure i'm not any big any big rush you know see the cool thing is also what i want to talk about is um is the the, the security hardening is not only just a uh, is a uh, uh, pledge and unveil an element to it too but you can also disable wxrx in the in the file system and you can disable jits just in times uh, in your web browser. So I'm just going to show you how to do it in, uh, in Chromium. If you want to know how to do it in Firefox, just, you know, use, use a web, use a, a search engine guys. Don't make me use search engines for you. <laughs> you can figure it out. You're, you're big boys and big girls. 
I mean, and the re- I'm I'm not trying to be rude when I'm when I say that, but I just some people just kind of like I just I'm I'm I just scratch my head. I'm just like, do you not know how to use Google or DuckDuckGo? Why are you you're asking me a question that could be I'm I'm you know, I'm gonna I'm literally gonna use a search engine and just give you like the first two results is what I'm gonna do. <laughs> so, but I'll show you I'll show you how I do this with with Chromium. So let me get back to a terminal here. Uh, so first off, uh, what you can do is you can. Um, you can edit your uh, FS tab. Be very, very careful doing this. This I d- don't try this at home, kids. <laughs> if you're gonna do this, be very careful to not make a mistake, or your system won't boot, and you'll have to boot uh, in from the RAM disk and fix it. Um, so what you can do this WX less. So now, now for a program to use WX or X, that just means that uh, memory is never both writable and executable at the same time. It's one or the other. Uh, to and and uh, to uh, for a program to use WXRX, uh, it needs to be in a WX allowed file system, and it needs to use uh, this uh, this thing right here. Oh, where is it? Use WX needed in the make file. So this WX needed flag needs to be a it's a compiler flag. So both of those things need to be uh, set. Uh, what you can do though is now if this it used to it used to be if you were to remove this from user local that it would break uh, Chromium and Firefox. Now, I haven't tested this with Firefox recently. I'm pretty sure Firefox will work too, but I know for a fact that Chromium will work if you remove this right here. If you just remove it out, and uh, that is a way to, to harden the system a little bit more, then you're totally, uh, you know, there's no WX or uh, X uh, being allowed in the system. Uh, the, only, uh, the only thing is it does break some programs, like uh, Mono doesn't work, so if you want to run Faniify and run some of those Steam games, it, uh, uh, they won't run when uh, WX Loud is uh, disabled, when it's removed from the uh, file system tab. And uh, I know that that GameCube emulator, Dolphin, doesn't work when I when I do that. So a couple programs might not work, but I know it doesn't affect uh, it doesn't affect Chromium, or uh, it probably wouldn't affect Iridium. I'm not sure how it would affect uh, Firefox. You'll have to find out, but. <laughs> You know, um, also, so, also what I do is, uh, let's see here. Yeah, I, in my uh, StoreFez config. So when I, uh, when I execute Chrome, I execute this, uh, dash dash JS dash flags JIT list to disable JIT, uh, just in time. And, uh, for the most part, everything works fine. The, the, Chrome I was showing you has uh, just in time disabled, and you can see that the performance is just is, is totally fine. The only thing I noticed that it affects is uh, browser games, games that you can play in the browser. Don't or some of them run kind of slow, like Celeste ran really slow. Um, and uh, I think that's about it. I don't, I don't, I really haven't encountered a site that just flat out just doesn't work right because JIT's uh, disabled. I mean, maybe there might be a couple. But uh, for the most part, I've never had a, I've never really had an issue with it. Let's see here. Yeah. So that's something that you could do. You can um, uh, remove WX Loud out of the uh, out of the etc. FS file system tab, and you can disable JITs, and uh, that with Pledge and Avail, and you got a really secure uh, a secure uh, method of browsing. Now, uh, some people you know might ask wonder, well, what's more what's more secure? Is it uh, uh, Firefox or Chromium, and I always re- refer people to this uh, answer that was given by Theodorat. And basically, uh, to sum it up, you can read this article. I'll put a link to this article in the description. Basically, to sum it up, he said that uh, Chromium was one of the first machines on our systems that had privilege separation. Uh, privilege separation was designed uh, from the beginning uh, to uh, into Chromium. So that's something to think about. That Firefox it was kind of pasted in later on, and uh, Kind of like a, let's see, what does he say here? He says, from where I stand, I think it fails to be priv set because the various process initializations still need to be way too much and the tasks aren't being done in the right process. I think Firefox is still only two process classes where uh, Chrome is six or seven. So, uh, so yeah, so he, he thinks that Firefox is years behind unless they change their strategy. Now, this was a while ago. This was a couple of years ago. So who knows if Firefox has changed their security strategy? Um, who knows how, how well their their privilege separation implementation is working? I don't I don't really know. I mean, 
I just I just think that uh, I think there's there's some good reason to believe that Chromium is it's just got a little bit of a security edge on Firefox. Now, like I said in the beginning of the video, there's going to be trade-offs. Like yeah, you're going to trade you're going to be trading out privacy. So, you know, you if if you're if you're more concerned about privacy than use Iridium, um, or if you're not as if if privacy is more important to you and you don't really care so much about the performance or or you know, maybe, you know, if the security issue is not as big of a deal to you, our Firefox and Tor browser builds are secure. They are using um, Pledge and Avail, so that they're, they're 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 not. I'm not saying that they're insecure. I'm not saying that at all. Um, I'm just saying that that, that uh, you know that Theo de Rat, you know, he thinks that there's some issues with uh, Firefox's privilege uh, implementation of privilege separation. And he thinks that it's, he doesn't believe that it, it's it's working very well, but um, that's just his opinion. So uh, so like I said, you know, this in this video I'm apolitical about this. So just you know, I'm just showing you what's available. And uh, and yeah, and we and we have uh, Firefox, Tor browser, and they're they're working well. Tor browser, I can't I can't get any videos to play. So you know, I mean, and that's not really what Tor browser is for, I guess. You know, Tor browser. Is a lot better for you know surfing you know like dot onion sites and stuff like that and reading articles and you know so but we uh, our fi our newest Firefox uh, build is working really a, a lot better uh, Firefox ESR does have screen tearing so now in uh, you know after I bored you guys with all the Firefox Chromium talk um, uh, here's some other options uh, we have let's see let's see what are some of the other options here uh, Midori so now there so yeah now we're gonna get to um, Oh, sorry. Uh, WebKit GTK based browsers. Now, I'm not a huge fan of using WebKit web browsers, just because WebKit is is now you talk about security issues. WebKit does have some security issues, and I'm it's questionable like how well it's being maintained or uh, uh, the development on WebKit. You know, it's uh, I've I've never I haven't never really heard good things about it security wise. But it's lightweight. It's usable. We have Surf, and we have uh, Midori, and we have Epiphany, and uh, some of those other ones here. Like I'll show you uh, Midori. So here's Midori. Um, for some reason, I couldn't get YouTube videos to work. They were just kind of being really slow. So there's that. I don't know. Let's see if, uh, if I can get this video to work while I'm screencasting. Yeah. It's it's kind of slow. There we go. Skip ads. No, yeah, I couldn't get YouTube videos to work on this one. Uh, I don't know. Uh, we can always try Bad Wolf. We have something called Bad Wolf, which is a privacy-oriented kind of minimalist uh, uh, WebKit browser. Here's Bad Wolf. We could try YouTube on Bad Wolf. Yeah, I don't know. See, this is this is uh, yeah, this is why I don't <laughs> I don't really use WebKit based browsers in OpenBSD. Um, so yeah, I, I, oh, that's why. I'm sorry, I needed to enable jo uh, JavaScript. So let's uh, restart it. Or am I? Or did I turn off JavaScript? Oh, there we go. Okay. Is that turning it on or turning it off? Image, oh, I think that's turning it on. So there we go. This is working. Okay. So Bad Wolf is uh, is is a functioning WebKit browser. Let's see here. I thought maybe. No. Okay. Yeah, I don't know why these things aren't working, but I don't know. I mean, I know. We can we can always try uh we can always try uh, Invidious. Let's see here, some mental outlaw here. Ah, there we go. See, we got mental outlaw. Oh, that looks weird. 
This isn't working. <laughs> All right. Well, that's Bad Wolf. Let's see here. Uh, and we have some HTML only browsers. Like, of course, there's uh, my favorite HTML only browser, which is Link's Graphical Frame Buffer. And Link, this program's pretty cool. I, I was showing you this, uh, how I'm going to use this during the uh, OpenBSD based uh, challenge. This will be my only web browser. But uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, very simple. I can show you, like, Wikipedia, what it looks like on here. Yeah. And it, it does. Uh, it does uh, render images. There we go. So you can see how, how it renders images like that. Pr pretty good program. And the reason I like it, it's one. It's still, it's still developed. It's still uh, actively developed. Um, most other uh, like terminal web browsers, like here, if we go to um, like links, links, links works. I mean, a lot of people love links. I just, you know, when I was looking, uh, looking it up online here, let's see if I can do a uh, links GitHub. It just seems like nobody's really touched it in years. It's just, it's old. <laughs> uh, I mean, unless I could be wrong. Uh, links browser. I think you want the links browser. Yeah, look, uh, not touched since 2014. I've, I've looked for something modern. Uh, let's see, not touched since 2011. Uh, yeah. Let's see here if I look at uh, links. Oh, this this website doesn't tell you. Let's see links. There it is. Okay, so 2.89 release one. Okay, so there was a, a release uh, in January of uh, January uh, in of 2020. So that was a while ago. So uh, I wonder what they're following upstream. Okay, this invisible mirror.net. Okay, so somewhere uh, it's being worked on. I guess it looks like it just had a release uh, about two years ago. So that's pretty cool. So okay, maybe I was wrong about uh, links just uh, uh, being out. You know, just I mean, I guess you know some people it's like, well, what more can you do to it? It's just a terminal web browser. I mean, yeah, and it's it's a cool program. Uh, so yeah, there's that. Uh, let's see, we also have uh, an HTML web only web browser called Dillo. Dillo is pretty cool. Uh, it it runs pretty fast. It's kind of like. It reminds me a lot of, of just the Lynx graphical frame buffer, but it's using something called the FLTK uh, kind of uh, GUI kit. Uh, not a lot of programs use FLTK. It's a pretty cool uh, little uh, kit for writing uh, GUI programs. Um, let's see here. I think I think they have NetSurf. NetSurf is another HTML only web browser. You know what? I don't. I don't. I didn't see it on here. I'm wondering uh, why NetSurf got removed. Netsurf. Netscape. <laughs> That's funny. I like that. I like that they have this folder here that says Netscape. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. I, I don't. See, I didn't see Netsurf anymore in here. Uh, not hundred percent sure why. Uh, so I know some people like to use that, but uh, we have Dillo. We have Link's graphical frame buffer. Oh no, we do have Netsurf. Okay. I didn't install it. Uh, I just forgot. <laughs> but yeah, we have NetSurf if you want to use that. It's a lightweight web browser with a GTK interface. So yeah. So, uh, you know, 
that's kind of OpenBSD web browsers in a nutshell. Uh, Firefox and Chromium are using uh, Pledge and Unveil. Uh, we have um, the Tor browser that's also using Pledge and Unveil. Uh, because you know they're the, they're just these offshoots of, of these main programs, so the port the port maintainers are using some of the same uh, make file kind of uh, uh, builds and patches that they're using on on like like uh, let's see like a say for, for Firefox the same uh, patches that they're using on the Firefox port they're using the same patches on the Tor browser port, so pretty neat stuff. Uh, so those are the options. That's the state of web browsing in OpenBSD. Uh, it's not probably not as fancy as it would be in Arch Linux or Gen 2, um, but uh, but it's you know we we but you guys don't have Pledge and Unveil, so we you know we got that going for us, um, and uh, you know the performance is pretty decent. Uh, if if you really just can't stand Chrome or can't stand Google and it's just something that bothers you, uh, you know it, you can either tr use Iridium, which is that privacy hardened build, or you can use Firefox, uh, um, and uh, and we also have Firefox extended service release, but it it, st it still has the screen tearing issue. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's all. Um, I hope you got something out of this. <laughs> you know, I, I, I was a little worried that uh, this video, I, maybe I just might ramble or get off topic, but uh, I don't know. I, I hope it was a good video. Uh, I hope you guys have a good new year. All right, bye.